Hey everybody! So yesterday I posted a video outlining the ambient lighting setup I made for our media center and it got pretty popular and I've had a lot of questions about it so I figured I'd make a quick video today to showcase how I put it together um, the parts used, the programs used, and how it works and the purpose of it. So anyways, you can't see it from here but if we go behind the TV we can see these LED pixels is what they're called. They are um, RGB addressable, meaning you can assign them any color in the standard RGB color range. And I've got a strand of 100 of them, but I didn't use all 100. I actually used 97 of them. That was more of a spacing thing more than anything. Um, they are attached to the TV by this. Um, it's basically just aluminum U profile or U channel, depending on if you're in the US or UK, they may call it different things. Basically, I just went down to Lowe's, bought a, a few yards of this stuff, cut it with a hacksaw, drilled holes in it with a um, power drill, and just stuck them in. They pretty much just press in, and as you can see, all the wiring is back here. And you see the power cable there that goes to the Arduino that you can see. Here, actually, let me go to the other side. That'll make it a bit easier to see. Right down there is the Arduino. That plugs into the media center via USB port. The power cable is further in, and that just plugs into a, a regular DC adapter. And that's basically it. I made this mount very simple um there's not really much to explain it's just a few pieces of aluminum u profile uh bonded together with epoxy i used goop you can use pretty much any epoxy that'll hold and i attached it to the tv as you can see a bit further down with nothing more than velcro tape it's that simple. I had a more complex setup with a, another set of uh, aluminum U-profile that I would stick to the mounting bracket we have back here, but it was really more cumbersome than anything, and Velcro tape works just fine. As you can see, it's a pretty simple setup. Um, the most expensive part was, of course, the 100 LED strand. The site I listed the tutorial for, Adafruit, they sell... 25 LED pixel strands. Um, I didn't go with them. I went from a seller from China going off the popular um, parts website Alibaba.com. I can provide a link to the one I used. You can find hundreds of suppliers willing to give you this stuff at uh, pretty good prices. As for the ambient lighting itself, the main purpose of it is to make things look easier on your eyes. Um, when you're watching a movie in a dark room, you have this bright, vibrant screen and then you have nothing but dark. That makes it very difficult um, on your eyes after a while and it can be a bit exhausting. For some reason it went into screensaver mode so I'm going to take it off that. Anyways, like I was saying the ambient lighting helps diffuse the lighting between the main display and the back wall meaning your eyes have a lot more viewing distance a lot more things to look at and so they're not strained as much. It also adds a bit of pop, as you saw from the demo video I posted um, a couple days ago. When you have action scenes, you see a lot of light flash on the sides of the screen, things like that. It just makes it a bit more immersive. And above all, you know, it's just a neat little effect that we can do with a media center. Can't do it with a Blu-ray player, of course, because you're not outputting the um, audio and video signals to anything that you can track. With a media center you can easily see what's being displayed. Uh, you can run a simple code. I'm using uh, Prismatic or Lightpack depending on when you downloaded it what it was called. Some people use Bob Light. I was just informed that may be a better solution for me so I may be looking into that. And some people use just the Arduino code that comes with the Ada Light uh, tutorial that I linked to. And all in all it's very easy to set up. The only thing that took me a while was making sure everything was configured properly and that it was tracking right. And once you do, it's actually a very neat solution that you can use. Um, some of the issues I came across, as you can see, 
our back wall is a shade of blue as you can see right now so that causes a bit of an issue white light looks more like blue blue light looks really blue red looks more purple and so that throws off the colors of the leds a bit as you could see in the video i posted however in the end it actually works rather well and in more colorful scenes it over comes that issue enough to where I don't really think it's an issue at all. Another issue is the distance. As you can see, we've got it quite a bit from the wall, about 10 to 12 inches. Whereas if we could have it about five to six inches, that would be ideal. However, the layout of our mounting bracket and the studs in the wall is actually off center. So we had to get a mount that would let us center it without having to do anything too difficult. And so that's why we can't put it as far back as would be ideal for the LEDs. So if you have something like a projector setup or a very thin TV mount, it would look perfect. It would look really good. And as far as the technical aspects of this go, that's pretty much it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the light to die down a bit outside. I'll wait for it to get a bit darker. And tonight I will demo it again with Tron Legacy. I think it's a very good demo. I'm going to use the light cycle scene just because it's an amazing visual scene and the um, blue, orange, red, and yellow lights really show off the ambient lighting very well. Buddy. 
as you can see the ambient lighting works pretty well as always if there's anything you guys want me to test it with let me know leave a comment in the comment section below or like and subscribe if you liked what you see and i will get back to you as soon as i can as always thanks for watching